Welcome to iLecture Online. Here we have another very interesting problem from one of our viewers. And again, take a look at this problem, see if you can work it out, stop the video, try to work it out, and if you get stuck and you can't figure it out, then turn it back on and see how it's actually done. So let's read the problem together. An object slides down an incline without friction. What is the angle of the incline if the average speed during the first 1.5 seconds is 2.45 meters per second faster than the average speed during the first 0.5 seconds? Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So imagine we start at the top of an incline. The incline has no friction. It has an unknown angle. But we are told that we, if we calculate the average velocity for the first half second after one half second, the object gets to this point, so we'll have an average velocity during the first half a second. <clears throat> if we calculate this average velocity, and then we'll let the object slide to a distance so that it now 1.5 seconds have elapsed, the average speed of this distance right here, when it travels over this distance, would be v average 2, and we're told that this average velocity is 2.45 meters faster than this average velocity. So, how do we find the incline? In this particular case, I really favor the, what we call the graphical method. And we're going to graph a velocity versus time graph, especially since we're dealing with average velocities and we're given the two times. So let's go ahead and draw a, a graphical solution to this and let me do it over here. So we're going to graph a velocity versus time graph. Velocity versus time. And we're going to call this positive velocity so the faster we travel the you know the, this, the longer the time goes on the faster we travel we think of it as a positive velocity so we have velocity increasing like this and let's say that this here is one point is 0 0.5 seconds so this is in terms of seconds and we get to a certain point right here and this would be uh, 1.5 seconds like that we don't know the slope because the slope will be the, the acceleration. So the object is going to have an acceleration, A, which is not going to be the free fall acceleration of G. And the slope in this case, the slope of this graph, is indeed uh, the acceleration. Now, we can come up with a relationship between V average 2 and V average 1. We can say that V average... 2, which is the average velocity of the first one and a half seconds, is equal to V average 1 plus 2.45. We can write meters per second. So we know that this velocity is greater than this velocity by this much. Okay, now what would be the average velocity for the first half 0.5 seconds. Well, the average velocity would be equal to the velocity at the halfway point, the velocity at 0 0.25 seconds. The average velocity when there's constant acceleration, we start from zero and we end up with some velocity over here. The average velocity would be the velocity at the halfway point in time. So we could say that at this point, when t is equal to 0 0.25, we have our v average 1. And we can do the same thing for the first one and a half seconds. If we go to this point right here, where the time is 0 0.75 seconds, this would be the average velocity for the first one and a half seconds. So when time is equal to 0 0.75, and of course it's seconds, seconds, then we could say that V average 2 is equal to, that gives us V average 2. Let's just write it like that. Okay. So, how do we calculate V average 1 and V average 2? Well, what we can say here is that we could use the equation of kinematics where V is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. Okay, so V initial is going to be 0 because we start right here. So, we know V initial is equal to 0. So, we could write that V is equal to acceleration times time. So, we could do that for both cases. So we can say that V average 1 is equal to the acceleration A, whatever the acceleration is, times the time, and the time is 0 0.25 seconds. And we can say that V average 2 
is equal to, again, the acceleration A, which we don't know what it is, times 0.75 seconds. And we know that V average 2 can be related to V average 1 through this equation right here. Now let's plug in what those are. So V average 2 can be written as 0.75A is equal to V average 1, which is 0.25A plus 2.45. And notice at this point we can find the acceleration of the object on the incline. Once we know the acceleration, then we can find the angle. All right, let's move this to the other side. So we have 0.75a minus 0.25a is equal to 2.45, or 0.5a equals 2.45 or A is equal to multiplying both sides by 2, 4.9 meters per second squared. And then we realize on an incline that the acceleration can be found as follows. So let's see here, we have a force, and I'm looking for a different color here. Where's my different colors? Right here, it's hiding on me. All right, so what is the force down the incline? Well, we have the weight due to gravity, mg. We have the perpendicular component, which is mg cosine theta, and we have the parallel component, which is mg sine of theta, which is equal to the force that pushes the object down. And then, of course, we can say that F equals ma, and in this case, the force is mg sine theta, which is equal to ma, we can get rid of m's on both sides, which means that a is equal to g times the sine of theta. But we know what a is. a is 4.9 meters per second squared, so that means that the sine of theta can be written as a over g, which is equal to 4.9 divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, which is equal to 0 0.5, which means that the angle of theta is equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.5 and that would be equal to 30 degrees and so the incline has to have an angle of 30 degrees for the condition to be true that the average velocity of the first 1.5 seconds is 2.45 meters per second faster than the average velocity for the first 0 0.5 seconds and that is how it's done our viewers have interesting problems, interesting problem. yep You mean the right one? Oh. <laughs> All right. There it is.